In this clip, I want to tell you about a game which I've called Coffee Table Jenga. And uh, I didn't invent this game, this is a game that a friend told me about, but the reason I want to tell you about this game is because it, it um, can be used to reveal one of the most powerful techniques in mathematics and phys physics without really going into um, a lot of detailed notation about uh, complicated things. So the idea of coffee table Jenga is that we've got a coffee table here and it's a circular coffee table and there are two players and each player has access to some coins and in this case I've picked the very exotic Japanese uh, 100 yen coin and the idea is that they take it in turns to put coins down on the table okay and each time that they put the coins down they can move them a little bit but once they've picked exactly where the coin is going to be and they declare that it's now fixed then after that you uh, neither player can move those coins okay so once the coins the position has been finalized you can't you can't move them and so the idea is that each player will take it in turns to put coins down they're not allowed to overlap coins so that isn't allowed but this is okay and the last person, the, key, the, the object of the game is, the last person to put a coin on the table that doesn't fall off the edge wins. Okay, so what's going to happen is that we're going to keep on putting coins down and eventually we'll reach a point where there's no space left over. Somebody tries to put a coin on the edge there and it will fall off. Okay, and so they're the loser and the other player wins. So if you've never played coffee table Jenga before, um, Obviously you don't need a coffee table, you can draw yourself a circle and get some coins and try and play against your friends. If you've never played it before, I suggest that you um, have a little bit of a think about how you might go about playing it. Because towards the end of this um, video clip, I'm going to tell you um, about um, a very good strategy to win, which is inspired by um, mathematics. So... Before I tell you what that strategy is, and this, so this is a good opportunity for you to go away and think about this game yourself and come back later, I want to tell you about something called transformations. And in particular, I want to tell you about not just transformations, but a notion of symmetry. Okay. So what is a transformation? A transformation is um, something that you can do to uh, change the form of a shape. So for instance, here's a disc. One type of transformation that we could do on the disc is that we can move it. So we can move it to the right or the left or whichever way we like. Another possible transformation that we can do is that we could rotate it, okay? And in, in, because I'm drawing this on a, on a piece of paper, there's only one direction that we can rotate. But of course, in three dimensions, you can rotate along uh, many different types of axes so you can rotate like that but you could also rotate like that and then um, another form of uh, transformation that people often talk about is is, is um, inversion and so the idea here is that you have a shape um, which is laid down on a surface and you pick a central point okay and um, so this is the central point here. And then what you do is any points in the figure, you take them to the opposite point on the other side of the center point. So for instance, if I look at this, this figure here, the cross, I have to take, this is the center point, this little dot in the center of the cross. I have to pull through the center point and take it the same distance along the other side to the opposite point. And similarly here, I've got this bullet here. I take the bullet point through the center point and to the same distance to, uh, along the other side. And so you find that inversion takes this figure and turns it into this shape over here. So these are some possible transformations. Of course, there are many others and you can, you can probably think about uh, some yourselves. But um, the, the transformations are very important um, for uh, the study of, of geometry and mathematics and science because of a notion of symmetry. Okay, so what do we mean by symmetry? Well, a shape is said to be symmetric under these transformations if it looks exactly the same once you've done the, the transformation, okay? So for instance, if I put a disc 
if, if, if imagine that this whole table is a blank canvas and I put a disc somewhere. Well, okay, if I move the disc, the, the figure will look different. Okay, so it's not symmetric under motion. Okay, but if I imagine I, I had an infinite line of discs like this on my blank canvas and then I move them all along by one, then the figure would look exactly the same. And so it would be um, symmetric under, under uh, certain types of, of motion. Um, but of course, let's say, again, we've got a blank canvas. If I put this disc down and there's no marks on this disc, then of course it is rotationally symmetric for rotations like this because as I rotate it, it just looks exactly the same. Okay, and indeed, if I imagine that this figure was just uh, that this um, cap here is just a figure on a piece of paper, then of course it would also be inversion symmetric because um, there's no marks on it at all. So if I were to take any point to the opposite point uh, through the centre, then the disc would look exactly the same. So this disc exhibits. Uh, uh, inversion symmetry about its center point and it exhibits this kind of rotational symmetry but of course if this is just a blank canvas and there's only one disc there's no kind of motional symmetry okay so how, how, how can symmetry help us um, to uh, tackle difficult problems so to give you an indication of this I want to go back to the coffee table game right so imagine that I'm the first player and um, you're the second player what I'm going to do is to I'm going to come out with a strategy which guarantees that I will always win the game. And the strategy starts by, because I'm the first player, I go first, I put the coin bang in the centre of the, 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 the coffee table. Okay? And um, now this hasn't broken uh, the rotational symmetry or the inversion symmetry. But now you imagine that it's your turn and you put down a disc like this. So you've broken the rotational symmetry because of course if we rotate this figure now it does look different, okay? But what I can do is, and you've also broken the inversion symmetry because if I were to take the coin on the other side there would be no um, inversion symmetry, uh, it wouldn't look the same, okay? But of course before you put the coin down the picture was inversion symmetric. So I know that if you have an option to put a coin here, I also have an option to put a coin at the diametrically opposite point. And by putting a coin there, I recover the inversion symmetry. Okay, And so this means that this, you've, you've put the coin down, and now I've put a coin down, and I've recovered inversion symmetry. And so this means that whatever you do next, there's also going to be another point that I can choose which would where I can also put down a coin. So we can see that wherever you are in a position to put down a coin that stays on the table, I'm always going to be able to be in a position to match it by going the other side. And because the figure always will remain uh, every time that uh, it, um, that it's my turn because I will always make sure that the figure is inversion symmetric. This means that at all, all stages of the game when it's my turn there's always going to be a point that I can put a coin down if you could put a coin down. So of course when is this going to break down? This is going to break down when there's very little space left on the table and it's your turn and you try and put a coin down and of course you won't, there's no space, it will fall off. And then of course if I were to do the same on the other side, the same would happen to me. But because you are the first person whose coin has fallen off the table, I'm the winner. So this is an example of using the technique of symmetry and symmetry in objects to understand um, and uh, the best strategy for playing a game. But Mathematics essentially uses tricks like this all the time to understand things like uh, the properties of materials, of chemicals, of um, mathematical problems in physics uh, and, and in mathematics. And so symmetry is a very powerful technique um, which is ubiquitous in science.